This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Netflix, Squarespace, and Laser Kittens. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Hack 5. I'm Matt Lestock. Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. We are your squishy, plushy IT administrators, your hackers, <laughs> uh, bringing you your weekly dose of techno lust. Wait, squishy? Squishy. Oh, you jerk. Hey, works for Fine, me. Whatever. Truth hurts. <laughs> oh, oh, God. But well, anyway, right. we have a special guest with us today. As you can clearly see, Mr. Christopher Gerling is here. Christian, Christian you, knew that. Early. you knew that. Come on. I know that. I know that. This is fine. I know you like screwing me. He, he joins us from uh, Washington, D.C. at the SANS Security Convention. Uh, Chris, how's it going, buddy? It's going pretty good. Um, have a little bit of party, a little pineapple juice, and uh, get ready to go out, actually, after this. And, and, uh, but uh, it's the Cyber Defense Initiative. It's kind of, I think it's one of their, it's not the largest SANS they throw, but uh, it's, there's about 550 some people here. Oh, okay. So um, I'm doing the forensics track and uh, learning all sorts of goodness that I didn't know before about forensics. And in fact, I shouldn't have been allowed to touch Helix until I went through this. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Do I hear a follow-up segment coming? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been learning so much about a lot of different things that there's, uh, I, could, I could make a whole series about all this stuff. Um, so, uh, of the, um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the really cool things that I learned uh, uh, yesterday, actually, was that the whole electron microscope, you might have heard about this, uh, that you can recover data off a hard drive with an electron microscope. Well, that's not the case. Um, hard drives are so dense nowadays that the electron microscope just, it just can't see, you know, that resolution and you can't do anything with it. So, maybe 10 years ago, but definitely not today. So why is that? Well, I guess some crazy people in the 80s, uh, <laughs> 70s and 80s and stuff, when, when, you know, hard disks first kind of um, they, they created all these standards, and, uh, and this kind of leads into my, my next thing. But um, and they had to do with all the limitations that they had when they started doing this stuff. And uh, basically, as hard drives got larger and larger, and you, you know, you guys know about this with the perpendicular drives, um, you had to put more and more, um, you know, space onto, onto well, more and more. Uh, yeah, bits on the platter. You know, bits on the platter. And it got so dense that the resolution of an electron microscope cannot actually pick apart which is, you know, true zero, true one, which is cover data. You know, when you when you don't know what's going on, you, you need to do that. If you, you you determine, you know, how far, you know, how close it was to zero and one, then you make an educated guess, and then right, you data. Yeah. right. So um, so now it's it's to the point where it's it's not even worth the time to try to do it. Cool. Um, so it's uh, it's been like that for about five to eight years, actually. Oh wow! <laughs> what? So, <laughs> so people are like, yeah, they can recover yeah, anything. Sure. Yeah, uh -huh. not well, so much. Well, you you recovered, you just recovered a uh, a master boot record from scratch, didn't you? Yeah, and all the partitions and extended partitions. We uh we, we took an image file, you know, a uh, DD image, a hard drive image, and uh, without having anything but a hex editor, they taught us how to uh, figure out okay. This is where the master boot record lies in the beginning of the first, you know, 512 bytes. And then after that, you just do some math with some standard numbers that some people created. And, and I don't know why those numbers are the way they are, and I'll, I'll send them to you. But, um, it's just the way they are. Back in the, you know, 80s, these people had hardware restrictions and just arbitrarily declared that, hey, 446 will be where you, you know, look for the first, you know, first partition. <laughs> cool. So, uh, and then you just take that and you can calculate and actually, you know, physically DD out all the different partitions on a hard drive and mount them. Just from some raw data? Yeah, just from raw data. You can turn them into their own image files, mount them in Linux, and actually, like, CD into them and, and manipulate them. Hmm. That is awesome. So anyway, Interesting. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to have some stuff with that and uh, definitely some other... I have, I have, Four days left to learn even more. Nice. <laughs> Good luck, man. Have fun. God, he looks like a little kid in a candy factory. So, and uh, I will uh, talk to you guys. Well, thanks for calling in, man. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, trust your techno list. Aww. All right, that's it. We can end the show. All right, and the show's done. See Thank ya. you, Chris. <laughs> Peace. All right. Thanks, dude. <laughs>
All right, so that was Chris Gerling. Oh, we're not. We're gonna keep going. Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> the show's I, I'm talking not over. about some uh, PHP stuff with Ping.fm and updating blogs and some WordPress. Yeah, action. you've been working on that for a while. I mean, I use it, so it's kind of easy to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's you've you've been like, I, dude? All about I this I am lately. fascinated <laughs> with the IBM Model M keyboards. Yeah. Now, we Wes did the the season. you know the DOS keyboard back. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the first season. Sure. But I stumbled across this site, and th they're not sponsoring the show, um, but it's clickykeyboards.com. So, I love click, 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 click. Clickykeyboards.com, and you can actually buy used IBM, because obviously they don't make them anymore, but you could buy used IBM Model M keyboards. Um, Look at those sexy guys. And, 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 like, for example, if we want to go, you know, to a straight Model M, mm -hmm. we can come over here and see, oh, well, I could buy one for fifty-five bucks, and it's kind of pricey. Well, for a Model M, for a tank. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, you've got your little, you know, what do you call it? Little toy. Your little Hot Wheels there. Okay, there you go. I and like that. and Matchbox. you've got and you've got your Sherman tank. All right. Yeah. That's so true. I mean, obviously, a tank is going to be a little bit more expensive <laughs> than a Hot Wheels. All right. You don't have to convince me, man. I I grew up on a actually before I had the Model M, I did the. Uh, the 83 key keyboard that had the F keys on the side and it only went up to F10. I had that on my PCX team. Oh, that's what wow. I learned to Q Basic on. So yeah, They're, those are great keyboards to one program of those? on. Yes, one of those. <laughs> wow, dude, that was my keyboard. Oh my I didn't God, have arrow keys, school. so I had to constantly switch the num lock. I love that keyboard. Yeah, so uh, I mean, you could, you could really like do some damage, you know. If you uh, really well, they've got a solid steel backplane on them. If you I want mean, to it's... defend yourself, if you're if you're an office. Cube monkey. That's definitely the way to go. I mean, and like a zombie uprising, you're gonna want something like that. Oh, oh yeah, sure. you know, key embedded Slice in the brain. Slice the head off. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. So if not for the clicky keys, at least for your protection. But I mean, so I, I and to be honest with you, I don't know how I ended up here. Yeah. I really like. I was browsing around at work today. I'm like. Yeah. I, 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 went to the bar. It, it was, it was having fun. You woke up at some weird website. You don't know what happened. That's the thing. Right? I mean, it's like and you, know, you ended up with Model M. <laughs> and I'm fascinated. And I'm like, you know what? Even though I would probably not use it on my primary rig, uh, you I would use probably, it at work just to I would annoy everyone exactly. around you. <laughs> you know, it's the clunk, 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 clunk. How? I mean, what do you? How nobody, you gonna, nobody how would you ever be your cube mate. Nobody, nobody would ever be your. You'd have the entire floor to yourself. Nobody would ever be your cube. Exactly. Mate. Yeah. I, I'm working. <laughs> click, 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 click. You know, screw you, man. I'm. Ch 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 I mean, so, clickykeyboards.com. That has been my fascination for the entire day. Um, <laughs> what about you, Shannon? Uh, my fascination for the week has been Logmian. How the hell did I l live without Logmian for so long? I know. I told it's you. I mean, we, we had before then. We had set up. Uh, what? We had done VNC stuff. We had done <laughs> yeah. RDP stuff. But man, is there something to say about the simplicity of that stuff? Just, yeah. just the free one. It's so simple. It's a shame they I don't give it. us money. Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be hot. Um, Brad, can we get some money? Um, <laughs> But I mean, I, speaking of long, I mean, I use it, you know, here at the house and my parents recently called me up and said, oh, by the way, uh, we've been infected with the two antivirus 2009 virus. Ooh, yeah, okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. This is that time oh, of year where everybody goes fun. home for the holidays to fix their parents' computers. I mean, I guess, it's, me. I guess it's good enough that, it's, that it happens now because now I'm actually going, I, I, I was scheduled to go and... Yeah. I can fix it. You know, it's gl I'm just glad that it's not in the summer where I have to make a separate trip out there to try to walk them over a Windows installation. Yeah, it's like a 500 mile round oh, trip God. or something. Uh, six something. Oh. So, I mean, it's whatever it is, but uh, as soon as I'm done in reinstalling Windows, log me in is going to be one and of the first state. things to go you on there. Steady state your parents' computer. You I do can't, it. Just do it. I, I do I it. I can steady state my yeah, own you parents' can. computer. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. No. All right. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, um, uh, you want to get some frags on? Uh, I do. Okay, as we shoot, it's tomorrow for the Half-Life 2, so we can't really say anything about that. However, coming up, we're doing some more gaming, of course. Yep. Shannon, what's going on with the LAN party? Quake 3. Yeah, that's all I got to say. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> well, give us a date at least. Okay, well, it's um, January 10th. Do you guys want to know the server, too? Don't Should tell we? me it's no. <laughs> it's uh, quake three hack five dot org. Is it Q three or quake three? It could be either or. Yeah, yeah, it's it's both it'll, of those. It'll be in the lower third. There you go. <laughs> right there. Yes, yeah, so I, we're playing some quake three. I'm so excited. I want to go to QuakeCon. 
Yeah? yeah. That's like the last big land, like the last like real BYOC land party. That's like, I've oh, that's, so where, many great that's where it all happens. In the 90s. Well, no, I mean, you've got Penny, you've got the Penny uh, Pack, okay. yeah, 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 and you've packs. got Digital Overlord in Rhode all Island. Right. But, but, I mean, on the East Coast here. Digital Overlord on Rhode Island. Where's Rhode Island? I mean, that's like in the middle of It's like of up in Boston. No. It's a Boston. I don't go northern more than Maryland. Come on. Boston. You've gone to Toronto. T Toronto is like... You said it wrong. Virgi the, Toronto is basically USA 2.0. Come on. It's I mean, further than Maryland. <laughs> uh, love you, Evan. That, never mind. Anyway, let's just... I'm going to digress. Wait, wait, wait. Let's Did you just... On. Con Best no, no, we're not. Love. We're not. We're, we're going to move on. <laughs> gonna, I like that idea. Yes. God. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, Matt, you're going to be telling about how to uh, tunnel stuff over SSH and Dude. keep things secure. Yeah, because... Oh, but you before we do that, we want, to, we want to thank one of our sponsors. Shannon, you want to tell us about that great sponsor you action? <laughs> sorry. You're complete, completely forgetting about Netflix. Netflix, I am so sorry. That was so not my fault, dude. They were completely skipping over me. I don't know what happened, but I, I honestly want to thank you guys because uh, we have like a Roku in here and an Xbox 360 and that shit rocks, just gotta say. Netflix, thank you for sponsoring Hack5. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. Netflix plans start at $4.99, and as a new member, you can get a no-risk, two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash hack5, and please, don't forget the www. Now we're gonna take a break. All right, guys, so I'm here today uh, with Darren, who is one of the creators of the internet famous. No, the tester. Pineapple. I'm not the cool person behind well, the Well, okay, so yeah. you did a lot to it. Though. I put it inside of a pineapple and then stuck a unicorn on it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's hacking. We, the reason he's here is because... You love me? No, not so much. But that's okay, because you actually serve a purpose this time. So he's here because of the pineapple. And what I'm going to show you how to do is we've been getting a lot of emails, Darren, about yeah. how people can actually protect themselves from Yasuger. Sure. I love where you're going, but real quick, can I go off script here and, and, and show you something? I think I gave you sure. the URL. Okay. So it wouldn't be completely off script. Well, there you go. Um, there is actually a way that you can protect yourself, or not, before you even, you know, need to worry about this stuff, there is the, uh, the whole idea of knowing if there is a uh, Yasuger or Yasager around you, and that is to, in say like you're running Windows, you want to go ahead and add into your uh, wireless connection profile a uh, SSID called uh, Pineapple Detected, right? Now, when you're out and about, if you find, since it's probing for pineapple detected, if it replies back saying, yes, that's me, how many SSIDs do you really think are named pineapple detected, okay? Probably not a lot. Yeah. Or, or don't make it that, because then we'll just add a definition to not reply to it. But, but just put something funky up that in there. That you'll know yes. that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Ryan, a.k.a. Post Break, uh, has a guest article up on Room 362, our friend Mubix's site. Links in the show notes, all that fun stuff ways to protect yourself. So now, say like you did. Say, you know what? I don't care. I'll take the packets. I need some packets. Right. Mm, packets. Sometimes you just got to check some email. Yeah. You know? So what we're going to do is, because though so many people have been asking us, how on earth do I protect myself and my internet, you know, from being jacked by Yasager, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to show you a very quick and easy way and to tunnel your traffic, whether it be SSH, uh, or excuse me, we're going to use an SSH tunnel to filter traffic, HTTP, BitTorrent, anything. We can do BitTorrent. Anything that can. We can do IMAP. We can do MP, anything uh, that can support a proxy, a SOX5 proxy connection. Oh, okay, that's that's will most allow any you to protocol. tunnel right over this. Um, there's two things you're going to need. Yeah, yeah. An SSH server. All right. Okay. Um, if you're running Windows, like probably most of our audience is. Um, there is a really easy way to set up a SSH server. That's that's my pick, dude. Which is free SSHD. Um, it's got a great you know user interface, Telnet SSH, blah 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 blah. Super easy to set up, yeah. Exactly. Or I mean, if you're on Linux, drop there, open SSH, all those fun ones. I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to get you know technical and stuff like that and just run you know a console app, 
you know, in Windows, you can, you know, install SigWin. We don't even need to get that that crazy here. We have a smooth wall running as our our firewall slash router here mm -hmm. at the Hack House, and we can tunnel into it SSH on 222. Yeah. And we could do the same thing if we wanted to change our rules a little to do it from the outside and then tunnel our traffic through the Hack House Anything if I were out in the public you know. Anything that allows you to connect in via SSH, Great. what I'm going to show you right here, mm -hmm. is going to work. So what SSH server are you using? What do you I'm going to use my production web hosting box mm -hmm. located in Texas. Sure. Uh, it's got 100 megabits up by 100 megabits down. It's what Hack5 is hosted on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually tunnel in, um, and the command is exceedingly simple. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to need is obviously to have a user with SSH ability Mm -hmm. uh, turned on okay, so or client, shell access. Client side, what software do we need client side? Client side, if you're on Linux or Mac, mm -hmm. SSH clients are already built in in the command line. Okay, Windows. Windows, mm -hmm. you can go to the PuTTY page. Um, everybody knows PuTTY. Uh, it's if not it's in the show notes. It, exactly. Only. I mean, if you are using a different you know, application, I, I recommend console applications because it's just one less thing that I have to yeah, you know, yeah. worry about accidentally closing. So, so what console, I mean, you're using like some... I'm just using terminal in OS 10. Okay. Um, but do you if, have a Windows VM for this demo? Um, I do. Yeah. But I mean, it's yeah, show me. It's the same you, thing. Well, you you added some special sauce to to the Windows VM to make it happier, right? No. No. Okay. Basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to go, and I don't know why I'm in this mode. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so we're going to go to. The PuTTY download site, we're going to download PuTTY. And what we're actually going to download is we're not going to download PuTTY. Mm -hmm. We're going to download Plink, mm -hmm. which is the command line version of PuTTY. Nice. Um, so we'll download Plink. It's less than 200K. Actually, it's 275. Excuse and then me. single executable. Single executable. Pop it on the awesome root. Awesome sauce. So we'll go ahead and save Plink. OK, there it is. So now. What we can do is actually come up here, and we'll close Internet Explorer, and we will launch command line, and start Plink. Now the command line options that we're going to use is TAC N. Mm -hmm. That will not give you an interactive prompt. Um, we're going to do space TAC D, which is going to be the listen port on this local machine. Because we're going to run a local proxy. We're going to run a local proxy on here that will then tunnel the traffic. So we're going to take our SSH connection that we have between your uh, server in Texas and here, and then we're going to put, make a local proxy that when you hit it on our, our uh, loopback on our Ethernet uh, or whatever it may be, it will just run through that tunnel. And it doesn't need to know anything more than that. It just thinks that it's hitting the proxy that's locally. Exactly. Okay. So uh, TAC D, uh, the port number that you want to listen on this machine here. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to do my user. Okay. At, okay. At the domain. At, at the domain. Sure. And because I run a non-standard port, yeah. we're going to do. Uh, I think it's this one. Right. Because normally it would be port twenty-two for SSH, but since you're a little funky. Right. So here we've got a warning because this is the first time that I've done it on this Windows uh, machine. And just like in the last episode when we were talking about fingerprints and SSH. So yeah. we want to make sure that that matches up. We'll exactly. say it does. We'll say it does. Um, so now I need my enter my password. And of course, if it doesn't when you're on the pineapple, well, then, then you get right. a little bit more. Tomorrow. So we're going to wait, make sure I entered it correctly for you know five or 10 seconds. Otherwise, it'll come back and say. If it doesn't come back and say incorrect password, that's it. Does Golden just minimize this? We, ha we now have a local proxy mm -hmm. set up and running that should, in the event that we open internet, Explorer again, or Firefox or Opera, or Firefox cool. or you know anything like I hear that. Opera's good. Opera 10 I'm totally beta just released. <laughs> of course you are, audience. but that's cool. Yeah. So we're gonna go into Internet Options, and before we do anything, we're gonna go to IP Chicken. Okay. Or what is my IP.com? What is my IP? You know whatever you guys use. Mm -hmm. So that's our current IP right now. Okay. Okay. So we'll go into Tools, Internet Options, Connections, LAN Settings. And we're going to use a proxy server, and we're going to bypass proxy for local addresses. Sure. But we're going to come down here, not type anything in for these. No. And we're going to use just the socks. Just proxy. the socks. Just okay. the socks. And your location is going to be localhost, and port nine 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 nine. That's what you set up in the. Exactly. Yep. So we've got localhost. Okay. 
okay, okay. Now if we refresh, it should. Hey, look at that. And it's there a different we go. IP address. And that it is. Because everything, because because if I were running Wireshark here, I'm seeing all the happy fun stuff, and next thing you know, I'm just seeing garbly gook. Yep, garbly gook. Yeah. Literally so what? I mean, it's 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 literally what a five minute setup. But you could you could make it even. You could script that. Right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be yeah. interactive mode. You could create a, a, a you know a bat file yeah. that has the command for to run your thing. You enter your password mm -hmm. and, and then, then your you hide it inside up. of a true crypt line because you don't want to have your plain text password sitting on a batch file. Somewhere. Right. Anyway. Exactly. I digress. So. Now that we're actually tunneling through here, we can go to, we'll say my internet provider, you know, and because my the server that's in Texas is fast, mm -hmm. the tunnel, even though it's encrypting everything over SSH, fast enough for you to watch it's video fast on YouTube. Fast enough to watch, you know, um, clap your brains off if we wanted to. I think here, so yeah. Um, so there we go. We are now watching a YouTube video over an SSH tunnel. Now, obviously, coming from your home connection, it might not be fast enough. We've got three megabits here in the house. That's not so too bad. it's probably enough for us. But I mean, like I said, even with the encryption that's going on, it's still fast enough to watch, you know, mm -hmm. and do whatever you need and to. And this is the same thing in Linux or in Mac OS X? It's the same thing. Um, one of the commands uh, for uh, if you're using a non-standard port might be a little different um, as far as, you know, on your, your source uh, SSH server. But beyond that, it's your command, tack n, tack d, and, you know, what you need to do. And this will then prevent any prying eyes from looking at your packets. I love this. This is good stuff. Okay, yeah. so uh, you've got a write-up on matlastock.com about, so because we just kind of mentioned what the Linux stuff is, you've got I'll have I'll have every that. single one. I'll have Windows with PuTTY. Um, EOS? No. Uh, Mac OS X, uh, as well as, you know, your favorite flavor of Linux, which obviously is probably most of you using Ubuntu. Um, Oh, come on, dude. There's a Slackware kid in the back of the audience that's just like screaming at you right now. Maybe I'll throw in a Slackware. And, and, then, and then the Gen 2 kid that compiled from source. That guy's lead. No. Yeah. They're well, really not. The Amiga kid? Dude, got to give some. I got to ask Moonlit for an SSH commit. <laughs> yes, application Moonlit, if on... anybody's going to know, Moonlit <laughs> would know Amiga <laughs> SSH commands. Anyway, very cool. Um, so that's that wraps up tunneling. Yeah. Um, one of the ways to do it, I love this. Let's uh, head over to Shannon and see what's going on with trivia. All right, so last week we had kind of a hard one for you guys. I know, it was a little tough. Hi. Hey, I'm going to do trivia with you. Is that cool? Oh, All right, yeah, sweet. sure. Okay, well, let me tell you guys what last week's trivia was. Stiletto, Trident, Polaris. Which of these man-made objects do not belong and why? Uh, the person that got that right was... My dear Vicky Wong. None other than. Yes. None other than. And we the, love her. There, there are rumors <laughs> that she is actually involved in the missile guidance system. Yes. Yeah, but uh, we don't, we, you know, anyway. <laughs> We're just kidding. <laughs> All right. Mad props to Vicky in Hong Kong. Um, yeah. We're sending her a documentary. We're sending her, yeah, the, the hackers Yay. documentary. So that Congratulations. Be fun. The, oh, uh, and the answer, people, was, oh, the answer uh, was stiletto. Well, the answer was, okay, and, and I would have accepted a few, but she, she was on the right track, she got it right, um, was that Stiletto was the Soviet ICBM, whereas Polaris and Trident were USA ICBMs. Yes. So, too many acronyms there, but, you know, they go boom. We're changing it up this week. Yes, we're totally doing it a lot more fair, a lot different. It reminds me of NES days collecting Yoshi the Yoshi coins. coins. Maybe, yeah. a little bit. Like up there. Yeah. So if you've noticed the, uh, <laughs> if you've noticed the little evil servers with the letters up there on your screen throughout the episode, maybe um, that has to do with trivia now. So what you need to do when you're watching Hack Five, if you want to uh, enter into the whole trivia contest daily, is you need to watch for those evil servers and put together those letters to form the password. Then you go over to Hack Five. It might 5. be scrambled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're going to be sequential order, so you got to watch the episode sequentially to get get all the evil server letters. Sorry, and then head over to hack5.org slash trivia <laughs> and then um, enter in the password and then you will get the trivia question. And there will be a form there where you can submit your answer. It goes into a little database and then 24 hours after episode release, so probably around noon on Thursday, our time, uh, we will go ahead and randomly select a winner. 
uh, and uh, make sure to fill in your email address so we can email you and say, hey, you yes. won, and uh, get your uh, mailing address so that we can send you some cool swag. Yay. I, I think uh, it's a combination Surprise of swag. our crazy evil server letter idea and Matt's idea of, why don't we just do a random selection so that, I don't know, maybe the kids in Australia have a biting chance. Yes, exactly. We feel kind of bad for not giving everybody a chance to win it. So yeah. So we're thanks, Vicky, for like totally <laughs> sniping and getting the trivia answer. She was right six there, minutes, like, boom. Six minutes afterwards. She yeah. knew exactly where to skip to. Mm -mm. Anyway, mm -hmm. now you got to watch the whole episode. <laughs> so we can't tell you what this week's trivia question is, but we will next week tell you what it was and who won. So head over to hack5.org slash trivia and turn that password. And what? Enter for your chance to win awesome uh, uh, Prono Buzzer CD. Board, so. Oh, is that Booyaka. what it is? Booyaka Shaw, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, what I can tell you about is our sponsor, GoDaddy. Thank you, GoDaddy, for sponsoring this episode of Hack 5. Starting at less than $5 a month, web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to GoDaddy Hosting Connection, the place to quickly install over 50 free applications like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, OsCommerce, and more. And if you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. And if you use code HACK5, you can get $10 off a $40 order or more. Check it out at GoDaddy.com and get your piece of the internet. Wahoo! And now we're going to take a break, and then uh, I think I'm going to talk about some video games. Video games! So here we are back on the China set with Snobs talking about video games. I think the last time we did this, it was like one of the very first episodes and you were just a little bit tense. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but then again, here we are. What it was, it's 16? I know, 16 15, episodes, 15, but it's crap. 16. Yeah, yeah the first, well, Can't the first time anymore. I was talking about um, audio surf. Right, which kind of has to do with what we're talking about now. Yeah, it kind of uh -huh. does. It was actually a um, 2008 winner. Of what? Of IGF, which okay, is which the, um, the Independent Games Festival. Yes, Independent Games Festival, which is going on in March in San Francisco. Yes, I, I want to go. go to the Moscow <laughs> Center. <laughs> Jinx. Oh, me sorry. Right. Just saying. Okay. Anyway. Or a beard. All right. It's all yours. Thank you. So, uh, continuing <laughs> on, what's going on with the IGF now? Um, well, basically, it's coming up really soon. They just closed the entries for anybody who wants to uh, submit their own or or. Oh, okay. So, so any of the entries that are mm -hmm. coming in for the 2009 ones. So for all those independent game developers out there that you and should students. just go ahead and give a hug to. Yes, and students. Uh, this yes. is the place where they feature like all of the the really interesting ones, and then there's really what, really there's cool prizes games. and stuff. Yes, there's like fifty thousand dollars worth of prizes. They give out thousands of bucks to these students and to these independent game makers for them to the research their games and make them even better than they are now. You can find some real gems too. I mean, think about oh, it. Oh right? yeah. Counter Strike started as a mod for Half Life. And now it's CS. I mean, I know, come on. look where it is now. I know. And who are like, what did you study in school? Ah, CS. Oh, you're a computer science major? No, I just played a lot of Counter Strike. <laughs> anyway. So I was checking out the website, and there are hundreds upon hundreds of entries for this year. So you've been going through a couple of these. What what area we're we focusing on? Now? Um, I'm focusing on well, the first page of the students. <laughs> so just the student category. Yes, right? just the student category. 140 some odd ones of those. Mm -hmm. There's the. Uh, 200 and something odd of it's like 220. The 200 of of the uh, independent game developers, and then, so there's like 370 some odd games for you to go and check out. Uh, what's the first one we're looking at? Um, so there's only so many that you can download from the IGF web page because a lot of them, you know, they have their own websites, but they only show you screen captures or videos. Well, a lot of them aren't absolutely done. Exactly. Or, so yeah. the ones that I checked out were the ones that you could download and you could play yourself because that's what I'm interested in is playing cool. the games. So what's this first one? This first one is called City Rain. It's kind of like a one of those Sims type games where you have to build Okay. your own little city, and you have to pay attention to everything from your money, which is down in the corner, to what kind of buildings that you're building, of course, mm -hmm. and how happy your people are. This reminds me a little bit of SimCity, like the classic, like not even SimCity 2000, the, the original. Um, but you've also got things falling from the sky, and you've got to build like schools and and police stations and parks and stuff. So a little bit of a Tetris element here. Yeah, you have to kill, you have to 
do all sorts of things. You have to build a landfill. Eventually, trash will start falling from the sky. You know, <laughs> regular afternoon days in the city. Of course. So We're um, trash falling from the sky. Go. But it's a very cool game. So you got to put that in the the, the tr landfill, and you got to worry about your power and your okay. Yes. How did you learn how to play this? Um, they had a tutorial. Whenever you go to uh, Quick Play, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's it's tons of fun going through the tutorial. Well, it's a Portuguese <laughs> game. It's by Portuguese students. It's dubbed in English. It's. It's, it's really funny listening to it, actually. That kind of reminds me a little bit <laughs> It was of, so cute. How are you, gentlemen? <laughs> she says, you have to fill the landfill with the trash. The trash that falls oh, from the sky. Oh, you learned very quick. Anyway, it's And then she says, cute. great, or no, you did that wrong. <laughs> I love <laughs> like, games God, that are like, so you did it wrong. <laughs> so that's the first game. Working. That's City Rain. All right. Uh, the second one I wanted to show you was one of their online games. Mm -hmm. This one's called Blazar, or Blazer. Blazer! Basically, you have this wormhole, mm -hmm. or your uh, big black hole. Sure. And Chakotay's in there. You're in charge of the ship, and you either have to bounce away large objects, like this one down here, from going into the black hole, or else it'll destroy the black hole. You want to feed the black hole these little green things, because those are good for the black hole. Mm. The whole point of this game is making this black hole grow. Okay, so you've got a spaceship here, you bounce things, and you want your, your black hole to get very big and powerful and evil. Yes. I love it. Exactly. Black holes for the wind. I can destroy these big comets, and I'll just let all those green things feed into there. I don't know if it's a blockbuster, but definitely something that's like you know arcade action fun. Yes, it's I arcade action that. fun, and that's why I like it. All right. So what else we got going on? All right. So I'll show you my third pick. Let's see. Um, I was going to show you Acrasia, but that one does take a little while to up to load onto my computer system mm -hmm. whenever I open it up. Okay. So I think I'm going to skip it. But I really like the idea of this game because there's a lot of educational games okay. on IGF.com. Um, a lot of them have really good ethics in them and things like that. Like there's one on there that talks about carbon emissions in your household and it teaches you about what kind of things you can turn on that create carbon emissions and how much it's going to cost your energy bill, all sorts of things like that. It's kind of cool for like a younger like, kid to it's learn. It's like the Oregon Trail, it but is. for today's generation. It's so wonderful. Al Gore, get on that. Put that on every Apple IIe in, in every elementary school. I liked, upgraded I liked Acrasia because the point of this game is showing you what a drug addict has to go through to basically get rid of those drugs mm -hmm. in their life. Um, Is that the crazy it, one where it's like psychedelic? Yes, it's psychedelic and it's it's really fun. I didn't actually read the description the first time, so I was just chasing around all these drugs. And mm -hmm. I was chasing around this cute little puppy dog. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you touch this puppy drug, which is, this puppy dog mm -hmm. drug, which is basically like getting A to the highest point of your yeah. high, you, you start getting your fall from it. Oh. And the puppy dog turns into this evil creature that starts chasing you, you know, into a corner, like you're getting away from your high. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a really good game to give Winners you an idea of, of like this continuous cycle that, that a drug addict would have to go through. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Okay. Um, the last one I wanted to show you, oh, oh I yeah, have two more. Don't forget about the froggies. Yes, Froggle, it's very fun. Let me wait till it loads up. Um, it, it's kind of like Frogger. Right, but it's it's not 2D and no, it's and 3D. Bit. This one's cool because it's, it's basically you have to learn how to keep keep your frog. Um, like you have to teach him how to how to move around with his tongue. <laughs> Okay, so you spit out your tongue, you grab stuff, you fling yourself around. Yeah, you fling around. The first stage of this game is you're going through this um, license mm -hmm. chart. Okay. So I'm going to go to the single player version right All here. All right. Okay, so here I am. I'm in the, basically the licensing department for little froggles that have um, expired licenses. What? Yes. You can't have an expired license as, as a, a frog. froggle. No, I had no idea that you needed a license to be a froggle. And there is no way in hell that I'm going to sit through this entire line with all these little froggies. So oh, I'm just no, gonna, too many froggies here. I'll show you the point of the game real quick. Mm -hmm. It's basically a two. Oh, I love that. It's like Pitfall, but with a frog tongue. Yeah, so I, I, I go up here, and the guy's like, uh, what, were you next? I'm like, yeah, sure I was. And then he's going to take me through all the different tests that I have to go through to, became, to, to become a licensed frog. A licensed froggle. froggle. Yes. I love this. So that's this game. And I, I definitely suggest you guys check this one out because it's a lot of fun. It sounds very cute. Okay, the okay, very this last, last one. Last one is anything but cute. It's a little bit. Uh, remember when we were talking about the drug one before? 
This one might work with those. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a first person shooter. On crack? On crack, yeah. with moving rooms that turn into waves and it's weird, it's dude. All right, let's it's check it weird, out. but it's so, so standard cool. Standard WASD shooter. We're walking around. We got some crazy guns here. It's wave number one. Let's take out. Some I'm people. in a big square. Uh -huh. Everything See those is blind squares. guys? Yeah. Those guys are bad guys. So right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to kill them. Bam! Got them. They're like little Tie Fighter duties. Bam! All so right, you can so. see the first wave as they okay, call so it. Okay, so then the, the level starts changing. Yes. We and then you have to continually, dudes. you know, kill your enemies. And then we get different weapons here. You get different we weapons every time that you kill your enemies. Um, you go through a series of stages. They're called waves. I think there's about 25 I think of them. these first ones is pretty much just teaching you the different enemies. Yeah, and pretty stuff. much. And it, it also tells you, like, when you start getting into the groove and you start hitting enemies in a row, mm -hmm. you, you get, get really cool, combos. really cool combos and, and things like that. And of course, you've got the trippy techno to go along with it. Oh yeah, way cool techno. Yeah, it's kind of hard because the room will start moving and things like that once you get to, into the higher waves. It's very, very weird, but I like it. And the boss is kind of hard too. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is definitely my favorite that we've seen so far. Highly encourage you guys to go ahead and check out the entries of the IGF because, you know, everybody needs to be hugging an uh, independent game developer. Oh, and, God, uh, the floors are moving. And <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave you to, uh, to play with your, Thank your, you very much. your trippy stuff here. I think and we're going to take it. a quick break. And when we get back, I'm going to be telling you guys about uh, how you can use ping.fm with some custom URLs and some PHP code to update all sorts of blogs, including WordPress. So stick around for that. We will be right back. Let's go ahead and check out one of those um, wallpapers of the week. Hell yeah. All right. All right, guys. So Darren is here. Uh, he's been working on this segment for a while, on and off, uh, actually, because he's been talking about it on and off for weeks now, um, showing us how to post multiple things to multiple places. Uh, or one thing to multiple places. Um, so you're here to show us Ping FM, which pretty much already does that. Right. But what do we need to do to make this work with you know well, something we've already got installed? Okay, yeah, that's the thing. Ping.fm, if, you, if you're not aware of it right now, you can just head over to Ping.fm right now and grab yourself an account. And basically what it allows you to do is, uh, it's, is manage all of those social media, Wankosphere stuff. That uh, so your Twitter, your your Plurk, your Identica, all that stuff. So uh, I've got uh, like a lot of these accounts, and mm -hmm. I use it because I get a lot of great feedback from like you know the internet, and right. it's a lot of fun. But it's just so difficult to like you get a login and do stuff and then sign out login. It's, it's just like too much, right? So ping.fm, you can just send a quick little email to, and then there's ways to make that a little bit easier on your cell phone, whatever. Um, and they've got this great feature that I want to talk about called custom URLs. Okay. Because if, if say like we uh, just take a look at what they have, uh, the social networks that they actually like integrate with right now. Your LinkedIn, your Tumblr, your friend feed, uh, your Zango, oh my gosh, your Flickr, delicious, WordPress.com. Um, Pretty much any social all the new stuff, yeah. thing that has a login they've kind of got. But what about what about your, your things like, I've got a Posters account, I've got a Tumblr account, I've got a blog over at DarrenKitchen.net, and since I started using this little thing, I've, um, I've actually started posting a lot more, just because for me, like the, I could never keep a blog updated. I don't know how many times I've tried, like, all right, now I'm gonna like try to post like once a week, and now I'm like posting like crazy because it's so super simple. Mm -hmm. I get a little widget, and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing and post to your, to your multiple blogs. Um, so basically what we want to do is use the feature in here called custom URLs. You can see I've got one right here in ping.fm that I post to. Okay. And I set it up so that I can post blogs to uh, my custom URL. And I think it's under settings. There it is. Custom URL, I can hit edit here. And I can tell it what URL I want to send my messages to. So I've got it heading to a special PHP page on DarrenKitchen.net that allows me to update logs. Right? Okay. So this isn't something that's out of the box. No, this is readily. not readily. No. And and if you need help 
Uh, there's a lot of crazy cool stuff that you can do with it. Uh, you want to go ahead and check out the ping.fm development community over at Google Groups because there are a lot of great resources here and sample code that you can use to put together your own PHP file. The one that I'm going to basically show you right now is going to take, so uh, I'll show you the example here. I've, I'm in my ping.fm dashboard mm -hmm. and I'm going to say I want to post a new blog and okay. call it I'm uh, shooting f episode. If I could spell F416, hello. Yeah, hey, whatever. All right. Okay. So um, when I go ahead and hit ping, that's going to go to my custom URL. And then it's going to rebroadcast to not just my Tumblr and my Postgres account, um, but my WordPress installed on DarrenKitchen.net. And that's a really cool thing because a lot of people use, uh, I mean, if you're using uh, WordPress.com, for your, your WordPress blog. It's easy. Yeah, that's their own hosted right. thing. If you've got a WordPress blog installed on your own domain, I mean, hell, hack5.org runs on WordPress. Mm -hmm. Revision3.com um, does as well. No way, very cool. Yeah. So you could actually update this from your cell phone, from a command line prompt, I'll, I'll go into that later. But um, basically, all you need to do is set up this little PHP file I got going here. And, um, and this is basically just a modified version of one of the examples that you can find over at the development community. Okay. But what I want to do here is is first you got to say what your email is from mm -hmm. and then you basically take the subject and body which are those variables that we're passing it when we're you know typing out on our, our Blackberry or whatever yep. uh, blog post and then from there I will go ahead and just do the PHP mail command uh, function to send it to my post at Postris and um, if you've got a Tumblr account, you've got a funky email address that you can have mm -hmm. to post to your Tumblr. So you just go ahead and post it to your Tumblr. And the same thing for my blog at DarrenKitchen.net. I've got a funky email address that if I, if I send a message to, it makes it a blog post. Okay. But WordPress doesn't really have, like out of the box, WordPress does support email to post. It's not really the greatest. Mm. It's kind of craptacular, to be honest with you. So there is a, um, a plugin that I highly recommend. It's called Posty. You can get it over here at Economy Size Geek. Okay. Um, it's a really easy to install, easy to configure uh, plugin, and I'll show you what it does right here. Once you've got it on your WordPress blog, just go ahead and uh, go over to Plugins. I'm sorry, go to uh, Plugins and Activate after you've uploaded it. Go to Settings and Configure Posty. And down here, really all you have to do is, is you can configure like the different roles that you can have when you send an email to your WordPress site. You can configure custom CSS for the, uh, the blogs that you send to it via email. You can uh, make it remove the signature. So like if you're posting from your cell phone and it adds that like, send from my Blackberry, because yeah. uh, wankity wank, you know. Exactly. You can go ahead and tell it, there's three dashes right before that, clear everything after those, you know. Okay. Um, and then you can also do an authorized list. So right here, I've made sure that I have uh, only my Darren secret email at uh, hack5.org is allowed to send emails to this to guy. To your WordPress. Yeah. Okay. Um, so all you really need to do is customize this PHP script and put in those special email addresses that you would uh, normally use to post to all of those. And now you can just use ping.fm to upload uh, update all, th in my case, the posters, the Tumblr, and, and my own WordPress blog, all three at once. And all I need to do is send an email to my super secret ping.fm email, and it does the rest. It sends it to that PHP, that PHP takes care of the rest. And Mails then, it out to the other three services. And, and, and this polls, uh, my, my WordPress one polls it every minute for a new email when it saves it. Uh, and, and I can even like put attachments in there, and it'll take the image and like, you know, WordPress will take care of that so that oh, it gets okay. embedded in the post. Yeah, so it's great. Like I've been able to like the, the past couple of posts that I've done on my blog have all just been done <laughs> on just just on <laughs> Ping FM. I mean, this is great. Check this out, right? They've even got like uh, I'll have this in my show notes. There's a little Ping FM widget here that you can use where it's oh, right nice. in your browser, and you're just like, you know, instead of doing a status update, I want to do my blog. You do your title, you pop in your post. You don't even have to think about it. And now you've uploaded, updated three services. I mean, you can use your, you can do this for your Twitter, your Identica, right. whatever. But then take it a step further. Use the custom URLs, and then get creative because now you're just sending great stuff to PHP. Anytime you want to do a post, you can do this from your cell phone. Yeah. You can SMS an email address. It right. Turns out. So um, and I even have a little, kind of a funky batch file. I'll, I'll have that in the show notes. It's not worth going into, but I got a batch file that you can use if you want to 
do it from the command line and you, you just hit start run and you're like, ah, oh, you know, ping FM, uh, I'm eating, I'm uh, watching Matt be a noob. And, and then the whole world would know, right? Really easy. I Aside like from the noob part. Well, I mean, I'll pay for that later. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, and, and that's the biggest problem that we all have is trying to update, you know, the three <laughs> dozen different services that we're yeah. all signed up to nowadays. And, you know, obviously making it easy and it's so that you can go and because, I mean, I even have trouble logging into my Twitter. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's like, okay, I got or, or like, post. I mean, <laughs> like, I have so many times like, oh, I got a great thought. I want to make a blog post. Oh, that means I got to go over my site. Go to the WordPress admin thing, log in, and then yep. I got to type out, the, and it's like, really? I just want to like post this link. You so know? now, and, and like you said, you know, you're, you're out, you're doing something, you see something, you know, you're, you, you know, can take your, a, you uh, could MMS it, and you could MMS the picture. Exactly. It, it would seriously work. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well. So I want to see what kind of creative stuff that people can come up with because it's just a custom URL to go into a PHP file. You could do more than just use the PHP mail command. You could do crazy stuff. Yeah. You could build a blog based on it. Yeah. Um, so there's that, and got to give mad props to Sean in irc.freenode.net um, in poundping.fm. He's actually the developer of, uh, of Ping FM, and you can use it to update all your social crap to crap in the Wenco sphere, so give him mad props. Hooray! <laughs> all right, so now that we've got social networking you know, kind of taken care of, mm -hmm. um, we have some very, very hot news um, to announce for... Um, people who like playing land games yes. uh, with us. Definitely. Um, so uh, Squarespace once again is sponsoring the uh, episode, and you've gone ahead and you've done a bunch of different work with the guys uh, over at um, at Squarespace, getting us a custom land page going. And you want to talk well, about your experiences yes. with that? Okay. Yeah, before we get to the viewer questions, uh, got to talk about the Hack5 LAN party page. You can get to it over at hack5lan.squarespace.com. And this is our new portal for all of the LAN party developments that we are doing. And uh, Dane helped me set it up and get it going with this beautiful theme. And then it just like, I took that ball and I started rolling yeah. like crazy. I got to say, um, now, having like really gotten deep into Squarespace, I want to move Hack House to it. I want to move like everything. Like I'm, I'm talking to my corporation that I that I do like sysadmin work for, mm -hmm. and they're doing like another rev on the. Oh God, you know the email. Like we're doing a rev on the website. It's like, listen, you know what? Let's just get some Squarespace action up in here, and then you don't have to send me copy, and I'm sitting there all day updating HTML because that's just not fun, yeah. right? And I don't want to develop a CMS, and I don't want to hack some stuff. I just want to put something together. And let me tell you, working with this is like so organic. Okay, so. Um, I'm used to, like, you're, you're working in some code and you save it and then it uploads to the, the FTP and then you refresh and like, uh, and, and this constant, back, even if you've got a nice back end like WordPress, yep. you're still going back and forth, right? Between and you're tweaking, admin, refresh, and you're tweak, regular, refresh, yeah. right? This is like all right there in it and you just like change stuff around to see the way that you like. So it's a very powerful blogging engine. It's got like everything. I mean, on the, um, on the Hack5 LAN party page alone, I put together uh, an events calendar, a tournament sign up where you can like go ahead and enter in data so that you can like sign up for like, we'll be doing a Smash Brothers thing right. later and we're actually gonna have like tiers and a single elimination dealy. I mean, here we've got victory galleries. Yeah, set you up can you upload images. We've got a gallery going on. Uh, there are like, like tons and tons of features. It's super easy to set up. You don't have to do any code. Like seriously, putting together the sign up page which just goes ahead and e emails it to a special address and then uh, saves it to an Excel sheet on there so that we can actually do something useful with this mm -hmm. was like, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to do any code. I just dragged and dropped the stuff that I like. That's always the biggest pain in the ass that yeah. I noticed about doing stuff is like creating forms. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. I mean, I just did that <laughs> recently for the segment submission thing for our internal back end production crappy crap that we do here just trying to make the show for you guys. Yeah. And it's no fun because I was like, I had the episode number showing up as your name. And, and it, finally dawned on me that I, when I copied and pasted the code from name, I had said type equals name and I, I changed, or I typed, changed name type equals, equals text. I changed whatever. type equals text. See, we can't even talk about like, it now. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's, who wants to do HTML? Come on, yeah. it's 2008, right? So um, there's that. And then uh, it's got some really, like there's these niceties that you're like, okay, you know what? The people that put this together 
are people that have been through the trenches, okay? And, and had I, to deal with everything. Yes, there's things like quick posts so that there's like a little uh, JavaScript like doodly blob like I showed you with the uh, ping.fm. You click the thing in your Firefox and bam, you get that, you know, right to your post. They've got that. They've got the email option so you can tie it in with the thing I just talked about. There you so go. You can email to, they got microblogging stuff. So, I mean. So now it's a word, your own yeah, WordPress, you microblogging, yeah, Twitter. What, what do you want to make? Exactly. Right? So, and then if you want to get if you want to get nitty gritty, you've got access to do all the CSS. You, you can get advanced and you can drill down and you can do some really neat stuff. I'm addicted to it. That's that's the thing I got to say is I started making the the land party page and then I couldn't stop. So I'm totally stoked that we finally have something beautiful. And I didn't even like really. I only spent like an hour or something on yeah. this. But now if you just head over there, just just update. You know, put the RSS. There's a little. RSS button over there. There's a thing where you can find out what's going on with our servers and uh, seeing whether they're up or not or how many people are in. Um, just like subscribe it. to that. Get involved in it. We're, we're doing giveaway for the, the LAN party that just happened. We just yep. gave away some, uh, some Valve poster. Anyway, check out Squarespace. Hack5LAN.squarespace.com. And if you guys want an account, um, just uh, I know I totally just like oogled over it, but it's very it's, it's as cool as I told you. Uh, head over to squarespace.com. Uh, Got to thank them for sponsoring us, and thank them for like letting me know they exist because now I'm getting my corporate people to. Get well, yeah, and, and plus they basically, I mean, they basically created the shell, and they were like, "Oh, so here you go." Yeah. Now and see the, how easy. Yeah, it is. and at first I was like, oh, "Okay, this is," and then I was like, "Oh, it's a WYSIWYG," and then I got into the powerful backend stuff, and I was yeah. like, "I don't even have to think," <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like All right. That. So, so thanks, Squarespace, think and uh, you've just you know made Darren's life a lot easier. I want it for every website we do, even hackhouse.com. Well, you know, maybe. Anyway, you want to hand me that so we can get through these uh, questions? Sure. So let's see. We have some questions this week, Shannon. What's going on? Just one. Just one. Just one. Yes. A simple one too. Pat Gamer. Pat Gamer. What's up, man? He asked a very simple question. He just wants to know if there is a way that we can password protect our applications. Um, there is. And it's funny that he asked this um, because I was browsing around and I actually found it um, just just checking one of the multitude of sites we all checked during the day. Right, right, right. Um, I don't remember where, which one it was. Shut though. up in your RSS feed. Exactly. So um, the application is called Empathy. Mm -hmm. Don't exactly know why it's called empathy. Eh, you know. Really has nothing to do with password protecting things. Uh -huh. You'd think like so lockbox or something. For password protecting your files. Password, password protecting, protecting file uh, applications. Okay, so if I've got like Quicken on my family computer, but I don't want like my son. Why all of a sudden I have a son? Anyway, he you know uses oh. my computer. I'm just now I'm inventing Little crazy Alan. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he uses the <laughs> computer to play like Neo Pets or whatever, and I don't want him going into my Quicken. I sure. can use this to lock it down. Yes. Um, the app be a PhD. Yeah, no. The 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 application that you download is actually a zip file. Mm -hmm. There's not even an installer. Great, I love that. We go ahead and we copy it to a directory on our uh, you know Windows computer. Sorry, it only works on Windows. Wah, um, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, and basically, you go ahead and you double-click Empathy, and here you are. The file that we're going to input um, is going to be a VMware Converter. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm a system in, and I don't want people converting VMs. There you go. There you go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select Converter. And we're going to click Open, and we're going to do a password of a single character. Because that's secure. Yeah. Exactly. And when I hit Protect. It will be, I, you know what, I, I honestly don't know how it does its magic. Special packing super skills with Whatever. awesome sauce. So um, obviously for the hardcores of the hardcore that want to get into something, they're going to get in. Yeah. Okay. But it's just making life a little harder for people. All right. So basically now that we've gone ahead and we've This is going to keep Billy out of Quicken. Yes. Wow. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and pass. We've already clicked protect. And now, when I come over here and I run my shortcut, mm -hmm. <gasps> so before you even launch the application, it's so it it didn't like put it didn't change the shortcut to it. It actually no. patched the executable. Yes, put it in a wrapper the same way that we would if we were trying to pack an executable and get it past the uh, antivirus. Same kind of idea. Yes. I wonder if it's going to get VMware anyway. converter is not even running yet. Yeah. So the application hasn't loaded into memory. Love that. So. 
there's some magic stuff foo going, on. going on. So the password that we eventually entered was L. And now that I've actually entered my password, uh, it will load the application. Um, now it's as easy DMs. as now when you when you create a, a password protected file, you have the option to create a backup because mm. it's patching the executable. Yeah, I could see there's some potential here for Borkism, you know. Yeah, so you create a backup, delete the backup if you want, or move it to a secure location, or we can go ahead and we can unprotect the file by just selecting it and clicking unprotect. Oh, we uh, got to enter the password. password. Yeah, and then and we can undo our changes. We'll unprotect and now. Now we VMware do. converter should load um, without problems. Without, without problems, without a password. So there you go. Answer cool. yes, it is possible. Empathy. I went to the dude's website. It was down, unfortunately. It's probably getting um, slash dotted. Something like that. So go to download.com and type in Empathy 2.1, and you can actually download it. It is a free application. However, there is a caveat to using this. Yeah, what's that? The dude wants you to send him a postcard with a picture of you. To his, um, to him. To, like, his ice cave that he has, like, I'm In confused. Scandinavia. There we go. Um, and the only way, <laughs> the only way to use a password longer than a single digit is to send him a postcard what? with your email address and he will send you a registration code. I know. What? Trust me, it blew my mind, too. But <laughs> apparently he's got postcards of everybody <laughs> that has used or requested his software <laughs> hanging in his house. <laughs> so, you would like the next episode of Hack 5? You Ma need to Mikhail send a postcard to or Peel whatever Box the hell your name is. <laughs> 2218. That's um, awesome. Uh, That's Mikhail uh, Strahovski. He, he gets mad props just for the uniqueness of that. That, I, that I was is like, so I was random. like, wait. All right, let's take really? a picture of snubs. Let's, let's send it in no. and see if we get on <laughs> I gotta send you a damn post. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I'm good with one password right. or one yeah, character. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can. <laughs> so you can use it with one 26, character. 26, or I guess 40, uh, something like that. So anyway. you can use it with one character, and unless you send him a postcard. So there you go. And if you'd like to send us a postcard. So yeah. happy holidays. Happy holidays. There we go. Is that it? I mean, it feels like we've been doing this show for the last four years. Uh, we have. <laughs> we have. For the last four hours is what I meant. No, not yet. Okay. But we could stretch it out a little longer no, if you want to. I think they're ready to go. They're so, like, listen, i got to watch TRS after this. Exactly. And seriously. A couple other things before we wrap up. Remember, forums.hack5.org, revision3.com slash forum. Uh, also, make sure you guys sign up via iTunes. Uh, Darren yes. uh, is going to make it blatantly obvious where you can actually subscribe to the feeds uh, on the Hack 5 website. Or you can go to revision3.com slash hack5 and subscribe from there. I had a question about downloading before we actually get too far, about downloading our shows via BitTorrent. If you go to revision3.com slash hack5, BitTorrent links are in the download links. It's just a little BitTorrent button that makes sure you click that. What are you looking for? Because I think I'm almost about ready. Hack5.org slash stickers so we can buy our new field cam and finally go HD for you guys. <laughs> new stickers are coming. Uh, new stickers are coming. Uh, the Revision 3 store is yes, now Yes, that's open. exactly what I was doing. It's, uh, Steph sent me the uh, cross promo. You can um, head over to revision3.com slash store right now and you can uh, grab yourself some awesome uh, swag. Let's see, it's loaded up with all new sorts of great stuff like Hack 5 t-shirt, uh, TRS shirt, I mean, even got specials going on uh, to go ahead and get yourself that control alt chicken shirt that you always wanted uh, because they are having some and look sales at that. going on. We've got a brand new Hack 5 shirt that you guys can go ahead and order. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it is the dopity dope of the dope sauce. Mm -hmm. um, so like Darren said, yeah. shirts, hats. Yeah, they'll um, be rolling out m more products uh, all the time. So make sure that you keep an eye on uh, revision3.com store and get some swag while it lasts. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Smack. So. <laughs> With that, we're reminding you to trust your techno lust. See you later, bitches. Woo! Bye. Hey, everybody, welcome to this. Oh, I'm sorry, God, that one's see, on me. I said I have to burp, and then you burped. You took it away from me. Uh, well, listen, it's the internet. <laughs> Paul, you are always so right.
Ha! Blah, 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 all I hear is shit coming out of your mouth. Ha ha, Darren fails! <laughs> Pineapple alert shows up in your wireless connection list. Uh, Guess what's around? Uh, that's all right. true.